Hi guys, Kim here. Welcome to Backyard Blooms. In today's video, I am over at my neighbor's house, Loretta. She called and she asked me if I could help fix her droopy Bobo hydrangeas and I said, of course I can. So these are the plant stands that I bought from Gardener Supply, but I also have found them on Amazon. Actually, Amazon, when they had their prime deals, I found these stakes. So I took a little screenshot of those and I'm gonna have those in my link in my description as well. Of course, you can buy these from Amazon, which are a little bit cheaper, or you can get them from Gardener Supply. And I did see these also in, well anyways, if I think of the name, I'll throw it up on the screen. So I brought four of these plant stands over here and they do have like little loops that you can, connect them with. So see how they go into the loops here, right there? So it will provide more space for you if you need something like a big project like this, or you could just use one by itself. So I brought over four of them for her, and if I need more, I can run back to the house and get her some more as well. So this is the Bobo Hydrangea, and Loretta, how old is this plant, do you think? Right at three years. Right at three years, she said. And usually after three years, they start to get a little bit sturdy. but. So we're gonna plant this up. I have these plant stands in my hydrangea garden as well. Now my hydrangeas are going on, I believe, probably three years as well, three to four years. And I took my stands out this year. But one of the tips that I'm gonna provide for you today is that when you prune these back, they used to say prune back by half. But then a couple of other people that I've been watching, um, Jenny with Creekside and Laura with Garden Answer said to prune these back by one third. And that way it'll make these um, stems a little bit sturdier when you go to prune. Now you're not gonna prune these. These grow on old wood. No, I'm sorry. They grow on new wood. So you're not gonna prune these right now. You can deadhead them if once these flowers start to turn like really brown if you don't like that color. Some people will leave them for the fall because they like that fall interest. But if you don't like that, you can just deadhead these like right about here. You don't really wanna cut the whole stem off. And then when the time to prune would be late winter, early spring, or right when you start to see the bud swell would be the time that you would prune these. So I'm gonna have Loretta come over and help me and hold these up and we're gonna go ahead and put these plant stands in and see if we can get this standing tall. All right, Loretta, let's let you hold it up for me. Okay, so this actually got the blooms off the ground, which I like. And sometimes, like even in my case, when I had my hydrangea garden, I had my hydrangeas and they were plopping over onto my sod, which caused my sod to die. So that was one of the reasons why I wanted to stake mine. But once these um, get some rain on, which we had a good amount of rain last night, I don't know if you could see these uh, water coming off these right now. See the water coming off of them? So we had lots of good rain last night, which make them really flop. And then sometimes after it rains, they'll like, you know, kind of plop that back up on their own after they dry out. But these are a little bit droopy. So we may run home and get a big taller stake and see if we can uh, tie some of these up to this taller stakes. So let me run home and I'll be right back. 
So Loretta has these plant stakes as well, and they'll work. These are mainly for like an individual plant. Like, what do you think? Like a gladiola or an iris or something like that that's kind of drooping? Yeah, just anything. Something that's really heavy, that droops, that needs like one one plant, but we have several here that we need to gather up. Oh, I got two or, two or three on that. I can always get more babies in. driving a bigger stake in there and then tying them all up. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I just ran home and I had a couple of these tall stakes. They're almost just as bad as tall as me. So I guess I'm five, six, so at least five, five feet, five at least I'm saying. So the pointy end will go into the ground. So I'm gonna just try to see if this hold some of these up. So at the bottom we have the small plant stands that hooked into each other and this one I'm just going to like kind of put in the middle of the plant right here. Let's see. I'm going to take these out and see if this will work better. Let me know what you guys have tried. If you have something that's that works for you and you've got something to share with all of us, let me know like how you stake your stuff up and that does really well and where you get your supplies from. These I got from Lowe's or Home Depot. They do not carry these plant stands that I just used down there. All right, Loretta, you wanna help me tape it? And do just a small clump. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so you just tied it right into uh -oh. the knot. So you think we have to go a little higher, or do you like that look? Or you want a little more yeah, up? Yeah, a little bit more up. So. All right, so we're gonna go up a little higher. I'm trying to be real gentle with these blooms as well, because I don't want to break them off. They're so pretty. lower ones down here it kind of looks like it's kind of a tearing. yeah like mm -hmm. it's tearing like layering better though oh the top now when I get ready to dry some do you do it at the end of the season yes so Loretta is asking me about drying so when you feel these to touch and you can feel them, see how like they're still pretty mm, soft. soft. When they, they'll, you can tell like by just kind of feeling them. And they, usually they say sometime in August is a good okay. time, but you'll be able to tell by feeling. They won't feel this soft anymore. And then that's when, and then you just like cut them off, however long you want them, and put them in about that much water, mm -hmm. and then just leave it. Like let it soak up the water and don't put any more water in there, and then they'll dry. You'll start to feel a difference in them. So Loretta already had these tall, skinny ones, and they're probably about the same mm -hmm. same height, about five and a half feet tall or so. And we're going to put another one. So we're going to have three stakes in here all together. Well, now that I know it will do that until those stems get strong, I can yeah. do it earlier on. Do you remember how how much you've been cutting back? Have you been doing half, not a third? I haven't done half. You didn't do half, mm -hmm. a little bit less than mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah, they really took off this year, then the oh, third did year. They? Okay, mm -hmm. so let's we'll start So I really here. just yeah. trimmed here and there. Yeah, so I think. Now my lime lights, I did cut back a third. Did you? One third. Yeah. I don't know if they're, if 
the stems on the limelight are sturdier than Bobo's, I'm not really sure. All right, so this is one of her Bobo's, and I think it looks really good, and then we have one more, and then we're gonna go ahead and stake this one up together, and then I'll show you a little closer up what it looks like in here. This would work really good with the different plant stand that I just had also. I didn't bring that many. Put the plant stand right down there on the right in here. Yep, and then we'll see if we can just. Well, I guess you could put another one over here, and we'll just and see if we can tie it all together. Alrighty, so this is what our bobo plant looks like, all staked up. So we have four of these stakes that I brought over that I told you that you can get from Amazon. Let's see if you can see them in there right there and they have a loop in there where you can just loop them together see right there how they're looped together so that's at the bottom and that keeps the blooms from hanging on the ground look how gorgeous these are to show you how big it is against my hand right here and then we put some tall stakes like this one right here, which was, all of these are like five feet tall. And then we just use the land, what would you call it? What'd you call that tape, Loretta? Florist tape. Florist tape to tape it around it. And we just tied it off. So we did that tape loosely because we didn't want them, we want them to drape a little bit and look a little bit more natural. So you can see here where that tape is right there, just against the, stalk here so that looks gorgeous and then this was hanging on the ground too so I thought these were just so pretty up against these blooms right there look at that purple lilac lavender color it almost looks like lavender but it's not if Loretta can think of the name then we'll throw the name up on the screen but let me where are these stakes at they're hidden so well you can't even really tell. So there's a stake right there. And that could be just for more like of an individual plant, but we have four of those in here to help stake those up. And this is the other Bobo. She's, she's got two of them. And she says this year was a year that they took off. Remember, the first year they sleep, the second year they creep, and the third year they leap. So you can see where the tape is just real loosely against the stake right here. And then we have another one over here just to make it look more natural. And that's what it looks like far further away. So I told Loretta that I wanna share her garden with you guys because it is absolutely gorgeous. She has a gorgeous outdoor area, and she's got a very large hill that goes straight up. So gorgeous, and she kind of tiered it. Is that how you'd say? You, you kind of like tiered it? So she, I would say there's like, what, maybe three tiers? One, yes. two, three, four tiers at least. And then she's got a lot of this retaining wall that's so pretty all the way down here. And look at this gorgeous fireplace. So she's got a lot of containers here and all these containers are on drip and that has helped her out a lot too. So she doesn't have to water everything. And I think it keeps everything a lot happier. But look at this gorgeous fireplace. Isn't that inviting? You can just sit out here in the fall or summertime and look at all these gorgeous plants and then you have the fire in the winter time too. So she's got several of the limelight standard hydrangea trees flanking on each side. So she's got two on each side. What is that vine on the, up Carolina here? Jasmine. Oh, Carolina Jasmine. 
And that blooms yellow, right, Loretta? Yes. Blooms yellow. Of course, it's out of bloom right now, but that gives a lot of interest we'll there, too. In November. Okay, she said it blooms again in November. So, November and when? In the spring? Yes. I bet it smells gorgeous, too. And then she's got some creeping Jenny, some tall phlox. And a popcorn rose that has an identity crisis. It has the pink <laughs> roses. <laughs> so they're supposed to be been white? The popcorn is yellow and white. Oh, and it's got pink on it. And it has some pink. Well. But evidently it was cross-pollinated because of the pink that's on the other side. So that's called a popcorn rose. Popcorn rose. Drift. And popcorn drift. And then she's got some containers here that are on the ledge. And these are zinnias, right? What else yeah. is in there? Zinnias and rosemary. Rosemary. And then some more of the popcorn drift there in the back. And then are those at the very top U's? Some type of U? Yes. Okay. What did you say the trees were? Cherry tree? Cherry. Yoshio cherry? I think that looks like mine. So she's got two Yoshio cherry trees, one here and one on the other end over here. So Loretta's like me. She likes symmetry, right? I like symmetry in my garden. And there's another cherry tree right there. And then you can see the other two limelight hydrangea trees over here on this side. And then she's got two elephant ears, which I planted elephant ears in the beginning on the, my west side garden and they did not come up for some reason. But there's her elephant ears and they're bigger than me. Another limelight hydrangea. So she's got three on this side. And then she's got some grass. What's this on the corner, Loretta? Les Pedisa. Les? Les Pedisa. Les Pedisa. Well, you'll have to tell me how to spell that. And how many, what color is this when it blooms? It's purple. Purple blooms, she said. How many of you guys have this plant? This one's new to me. Have you? And this. Oh, and Loretta said that this, look, look, how, put yourself up next to it, Loretta. Look how big. <laughs> she said this plant came as a baby. It's just amazing how big that is. Look at the color striation on that. Oh, wow. And I bet that's gorgeous when the sun hits See, it. this one, you can already tell all the new plants. You can separate oh, yeah. you can divide it. Yeah. So she said, let me kind of come up here. She said, these right here are the babies that you can divide. So you got several, Loretta. Yep. Oh, here's one right here. She might have to let me have that oh, one. Yeah. That one right there. It's a real baby. Do they come back every year, I guess? They do. Oh, I love this color of this leaf. Really? It is pretty. And then the pink muley. That's what the grass pink is. muley. She said this is a pink muley grass. Now when will that, did it already bloom or did it? Is it in the fall? It went, in fact, if you look, it's beginning to. See the little oh pink? yeah. Just beginning to. So she said it's a beginning to start coming out and bloom its little pink. Right there. And then So this is where, behind here, this is where our main road is that goes into our neighborhood. So that's a main highway. So there's lots of magnolia trees and I guess those are like maples, right? Or what do you think? Maples up there. And then she's got another magnolia that's pink. And I can see one bloom on that. Let me see if I can zoom up right there. I bet it's really pretty close up. And it was a lake breeze, so. 
So she's got a lot of gardenias and she had to cut those all the way back because they did not do well in that Arctic freeze that we had this past winter, but at least they still lived. They look really pretty. And then she's got some gorgeous cone flowers. I love this color. Beautiful. Look how pretty that is close up. I have a few this color, Loretta, that I planted too. They're just now starting to come out and bloom. Mm -hmm. And then a whole row of Creeping Jenny. Did, did you, do you propagate that too? No, the no? landscapers did that. Okay. It's just growing. Is, um, what's this ground cover up here? Is that a juju? Like a, a juju? juju. A, a juga. juga. Okay. And it blooms in the spring. And a few azaleas? Yes. A few that azaleas up there. But yeah. Oh, you got another baby back there in the corner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's too shady for it back there. The elephant ear. Yeah. You know, mine, I guess I planted mine in a shady area. Maybe that's why they didn't be come that's up. That's why that one, because that's Well, it's, thing. it gets morning sun mm -hmm. and then, I'm sorry, morning shade and then sun in the afternoon. But you still think that would have yeah, been enough. Yeah, think that would be enough. And these are like black eyed Susans? Yeah. Yep. It's black eyed Susans. And then she's got a couple of peonies that she has got going here too. Now you know you can cut them back once they start because they do not like the heat. And when they start to turn brown, you can just cut them all the way back. Oh, okay. But yours aren't brown. Mine have already this one is. Oh, mine have already turned brown. Yeah. Let's see the two down there, how well those are doing. Yeah. Five. I'm going to come up here and show you this gorgeous pink bloom. I'm all the way up on this hill. Let's see if I can get to it. There we go. Look how pretty that is. I bet that is beautiful when it's in full bloom. So this is what the top tier looks like. And this is the second and then the third. And then she's got another tier down there. Look at those gorgeous yellow daylilies down there. I just noticed this gorgeous it's flower too. Yeah, um... It's not a Coreopsis, is it? Mm -hmm. We'll throw the name up if we remember it. She'll let me know. So here's some tall phlox. And that is gorgeous in bloom right now. You can cut your phlox back too when it stops blooming to get another flush. So you can see the drip running through here too. So Loretta doesn't have to constantly water all these plants. That would be a chore to do so you can see it where it's labored. I can see one, two, three, at least four layers of drip that go all the way across. And this is the side of her house right here. So she's got some cone flowers here and then some zinnias and this, look at this bee, it's just sleep on here, I believe. I just learned, Loretta, did you know that these big bumblebees, the males will not go to their home. They'll just hang out and sleep on plants. Uh -huh. okay. And the females will go. Some I thought were asleep. Yeah. So he's asleep. Okay. I learned that today. I did not know that. So she's well, got I some also red. I read that the light colored zinnias, like the white. Yeah. Are supposed to be poisonous to the Japanese beetles, so I'm going to try oh, to plant some more okay. white next year. I've also heard that geraniums are poisonous for Japanese beetles. Hmm. Okay, so Loretta had to show me this big, huge mom that comes back every year, and she said this is she calls it her gigantor. <laughs> it is so big. <laughs> Never had it. That big. I I get what it's like four feet across. Four feet by four feet, maybe. And then she said she just gave up. She likes, to, of course, most moms, you don't want them to bloom right now, so you keep cutting them off. But 
she said she just gave up and she's just going to let it do its thing. But here's one bloom. Well, this is the color that it's going to be. And just some more zinnias, all different colors here. I just love like showing the middle of the flower Loretta, like how, look, like if you get so close up, like how dainty all of it is. Like, look, it's just beautiful. And then like this one right here, how you can see all the little intricate detail of it. So make sure you look at your flowers close up. It is so pretty. Your little workhorses. Yeah. This color is gorgeous too. Do you have your own seed or do you plant seed each year? No, this is the first time I've planted seed. Seeing this? My first year. And then this right here is Russian sage. And this bee, look, he's asleep too. They're just dancing. Oh, no, he came alive. And there's another bee dancing around over there. I can't really get close to it. Loretta, I can show bees all day long <laughs> on plants. The bees. And then she has a clematis growing up on one of these obelisk here. What color is this one? Purple. Purple, she said. Now, you know, like I cut my clematis back already. Really? And last year I didn't know, but I just cut it back and it came back from the ground up. I just cut it back from 12 to 18 inches and it came it flushed all the way back up and bloomed again. Yeah. Oh, I was shocked. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, there's one of them. So Loretta spied a bloom and I did not see it. Go. So I got to share with you, I bought Loretta this big fat bunny because I don't deal with bunnies. I deal with deer and she deals with bunnies. So I saw this big fat bunny and I said, Loretta, <laughs> this is your bunny that <laughs> ate all your flowers. He's all fat. <laughs> so we're gonna go up the stairs here and I'm gonna show you this container right here. So she's got some geraniums, oh, lantana, right? Mm -hmm. Lantana, geraniums. Now I don't know what this is. But she said she cut it back and it started to flush out again. What color does it bloom? It's a pink. Pink. It's a very delicate little flower. It almost is looks it? like a little butterfly. Is it Gara? Yes. Oh, that's what I just had a video on dancing butterflies oh. in my garden was the Gara. So. Yep, Gara. All right, and then these are super bells, right? The double, a double super bell? I think, but I'm not Looks sure. like it. It's not a petunia. Yeah. No. Calopacoa. It's kind of like that million bell. Yeah. I always call them super bells. Calopacoa is what it's called. Yeah. Yeah. So Loretta asked me if I ever heard of a moon vine, and I have not. But she said this one set seed from last year. And she said it blooms at nighttime, and that is why it's called a moon vine. So I told her she might have to share seed with me after it goes to seed and it's climbing up this trellis and do you know the name of this Loretta she said she just propagates this all the time uh, wandering Jew, wandering Jew? okay and it does it winter over yes it'll yeah come back. okay and here is oh some more gorgeous comb flowers here in the Manda Villa. So that would be pretty climbing up there too, but that's not a climbing one, is it? It's like more like a short little... It's supposed to be a climb. Is it? But the moon vine has kind of... Yeah. I bet it would climb up there though. I'm trying, but the moon vine, once... once and I'm trying to get over here and show you this gorgeous yellow daylily. Look how soft and pretty that yellow is. She's got some more daylilies. And tell me about this, Loretta. What is this? Oh, Circle of Friends. Oh, okay. And you put a little candle in it. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. My daughter oh. gave that to me for Christmas Cute. one year. Yeah, just a little Aww. garden pumpkin. Everybody needs friends, and don't we, Loretta? What I did with this is I put it under this plant because when this, the drip is on, it drips here. It so waters it, that? It waters that. So oh, nice. It has been happy, happy, happy. So there. she's got a geranium in this container right here. And it's not a self-watering container and it's not on drip, but she says that when she waters this one, it drips down and waters it too. And this whole container right here is all from cutting, she said. There's that wandering Jew that was in the ground, so you can tell it does really well in a container too. Swedish ivy. And this is ivy. Swedish ivy. Swedish ivy, she said. I never heard of Swedish mm -hmm. ivy. And I don't know of this either. I bet some of you know, so you'll have to let me know. But I love how it hugs the plant, a pot. When you put it in a pot, how it hugs. Yeah. It's pretty. It's got a good texture to it. And this is my very first David Austin right? Oh. So yours yours has done better than mine. I yeah. trimmed it, and this is what happened after I did the trim, like you right. said, just before the... So she got a David Austin rose and you, it was bare root, right? It was bare, root. bare root, which I highly suggest. I like planting on mine. Bare root, they do just fine. It's not anything to be scared about, is it, Loretta? Not at all. Yeah. And then she's got, I think that's a pot with your petunias in there, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's is that right like a midnight? I don't know. I'm bad with these dark purples. I had one that was called Royal something, but I think mine's not as deep as that color. It's a pretty color though. Yep, I had fun with this. And look at this, this seed on. It's really pretty this year too, and it's all kind of gone. The lemon coral seed on does this, goes to um, bloom like this too. Mm -hmm. And the bees. I love, love it, yeah. Oh, here's one right here. Mm -hmm. Told you, there's a bee, I'll find it. This is supposed to be a climber, so I need to do something to... You can put, um, you can put like wire up there or you can put like just a hook. Mm -hmm. So you okay. can put like a little, those little white hooks that just kind of screw in there. And then if you put the hook there, then you can just okay. attach, let's see. If she had a little white hook, she can just attach it right there and then try to train it up. And then put more hooks as you go up. Mm -hmm. Oh, it would be so pretty if it went on up uh, or just straight up the that yep. post That's right there. Yeah, and across. Oh, I can see that. Mm -hmm. That would be pretty in several years. She's got some outdoor lighting. And what is this thing called? It's not a trellis. What is this? Oh, just kind of oh, gives you some shade. Pergola. pergola, yeah. She's got a nice outdoor entertaining area. Love her outdoor furniture. She has some more containers over here and a little bit of hardscape, like an obelisk that's hanging on. That's cute. I love stuff like that in the garden too, as long as it's not overdone, but just mm -hmm. tastefully. And she's got some iron planters here as well all types of little greenery in there and that's english ivy right yes yeah does that winter over for you it does she said it winters over look how pretty this is So I hope this video was helpful and inspiring and i hope that you love loretta's garden and i hope that us planting a uh, Staking up her bobo hydrangeas was helpful to you. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye, Bye. friends.